Hello and welcome to quick hit number three, incremental fact processing. Just as in the previous quick hit video, this question comes from an external source, in this case a poster on Learn Microsoft BI. And basically the poster's problem is trying to do some incremental processing on a measure group. Now, this gets a little confusing because there are measure groups and partitions for those, and, and basically any measure group, parti uh, measure group processing is partition processing. A measure group has one or more partitions, and you can process partitions individually. But the problem here is that the user is saying, look, I'm adding new records to the fact table, and I want to do incremental processing uh, of a partition. I only want to read the new records into that partition, but anytime I do incremental processing, I'm getting duplicate records in. Well, the reason for that is, is fairly straightforward. I'll show you in just a moment. But the, the fixing that, it's easy to show, but then automating the process becomes a bit more of a challenge, and I'll discuss that. The incremental approach is to do a process incremental. Now, in parentheses, I also have process add there. It's process incremental in both bids 2005 and 2008. That's what you see if you're doing it from bids. But if you're doing it with an XMLA script, which is more common, and I'll show that in just a moment, then the keyword is process add, not process incremental like you might think. So I'm going to do a, an incremental process, a process add on a partition. But in order to do it and not repeat data, I have to modify the query to pull just the latest information. So somewhere I have to be storing what was that value the last time I did it. You're usually using a, a date or a date time stamp of some sort and that's what I'll show you here. But so somewhere I have to store and know well last time I did this I started with this particular date and then I ended with this one so now this time I have to start with the ending from last time and, and go forward from there. So you'll modify the query to pull just the latest data and then you'll store this value for the start next time. So Let's jump into the, the machine here and take a look at this in action. Now here I am in BI Dev Studio. This happens to be 2008, but it doesn't matter. And I've already processed the cube fully. This is just the AdventureWorks 2008 sample cube. And notice that after a full process, this is the number I'm going to be concentrating on. In 2004, the last year for which I have data, my internet sales amount is 9.77 million, as you can see right here. Now, that particular value is what I'll be changing. And 2004, so last year I have data, and I don't have data for the full year. I only have it through July 31st of 2004. Now, the way this is currently set up, there are multiple partitions in this example. Don't worry about if you're not using multiple partitions. But when you have these partitions, you'll notice the one for 2004 does the equivalent of a select star. It selects all the columns from the fact table. And then it uses a, a where clause with an order date key to say that it wants values between January 1st, 2004 and December 31st, 2004. So in this way, if you do a full process, it will grab all of the records for 2004 and put them in this partition. Well, remember that in this case, I don't have a full year, I only have through July of actual data. So if some new records came in, I would want to do a process add and add only the new records. The problem is that with the query as it stands now, of course, it's going to grab everything. So if I do a process add with this same where clause, then it's actually going to grab all the records again and duplicate those. So I'll show you that very quickly. I'm going to use an XMLA script and I'll explain a little bit later of why I'm using an XML script to do this, but I'll go ahead and copy and paste the WHERE clause in here, and then I will execute this particular script. Now after executing this script, if I go back and look at the value, remember right now it is 9.77 million. If I reconnect, after doing an incremental process, remember, it now becomes 19.54 million. So it has doubled the data that is in that, no surprise. 
So what exactly did I do in my XMLA script? Well, I told it right here to do a process add. Remember, that is incremental process. But it's all controlled by this where clause. So if I do an incremental process after I've set up a partition, it doesn't matter. It's just going to repeat all the data. I have to modify that where clause. That's why if I were to come into here, for example, right-click on the partition, choose process, and then come up here and do a process incremental. Actually, I have to go through a configuration process, but I, I would have to modify that where clause or else I'll duplicate data. And I think that was the problem from the forum poster was just running through with the same where clause in that XMLA script that's in this partition. So how do you go about fixing that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return to my uh, SQL Server Management Studio, but let's jump over to the SQL side, the relational side of the world for a moment. First of all, in my Fact Internet Sales table, how many records do I currently have in the year 2004? Well, you'll notice down here at the bottom I have 32,265. So what I'm going to do is insert one additional record. Now, I should scroll to the bottom here and show you, by the way, that they do end as far as the order date key with July 31st. So let me come back up here and I'm going to insert a new record and this record is going to go onto August 1st. And I'm going to make this quite obvious, don't worry about these other values, but I'm going to make it uh, an internet sales amount of 1 million so it will be very clear when it occurs. So I'll go ahead and insert this and just to verify it's there I'll do a quick select on it and you should now see this particular record comes up, it does, and if I scroll out to the right, remember that the internet sales amount right here is one million. So at this point, I want to process incremental, and so I'm going to use the process add for this, and now I'm going to come down here, and in my select statement, this is something that you'll have to modify every time, potentially. So what I'm going to do is say greater than and I'm going to use the old value that I know had data for it. And of course the old value was 0731, so July 31st. So I want anything greater than that. So now when I execute this, it will run through and do a process add of any data only since that last date. And sure enough, once that's done, I can come back to my browser and reconnect and you'll notice that this time the 2004 value added only 1 million not the 9.77 million again. Now let's go back and look at the XMLA script for just a moment. Notice that of course what I've done here is told it I'm going to process a cube and then a particular measure group and in fact then a particular partition within that measure group. Then I come down and I modify the query definition by simply changing this date. And this symbol, this, this is a, the greater than symbol, but since that's used to denote tags in XML, you have to use the, the symbol uh, ampersand GT semicolon. And of course, less than is uh, ampersand LT semicolon. But I'm, I'm modifying that here and putting in this date. Now, I've done this by hand manually. If you wanted to automate this process, normally you would have uh, all the, I mentioned before, all the new records in a separate table and just process that. Or in this particular case where I actually inserted the new record into the same fact table, I would run this, let's say, for example, I ran this tonight uh, for the first time, I would then store that uh, tonight's value, whatever it happens to be, let's, let's say it's uh, August 1st, and I've inserted any records that occurred after July 31st. So then I would store August 1st, and then two or three days later when I came back, I would pull that value out, insert that into the string here, run that, and whatever that night was, I would store into the string. So normally, you don't use just a date, you use a date timestamp, but you, you date timestamp your records and then you say I want any record after this particular moment in time and then you will 
store that. The next time you come back, you grab that as the starting point uh, and continue down that, that process. So whether you do that inside an integration services package, whether you, you do some custom coding or you do it manually as I've done it here, doesn't really matter. The idea is that you must change this query definition. So in conclusion, to automate the process, you're going to need uh, an XMLA script you can modify programmatically, whether again that's an IS or a pack or, or a custom application you write or you know you just, just someplace stored a uh, text file that you're going to use uh, ASCMD with. You, you're going to have to take this script and then somehow modify it to pull only the new data. So somewhere you have stored the criteria that you used previously, you use that as the starting point now and when you're done with it you store whatever the current criteria is as the starting point for next time. Then you'll pull that out, you'll modify the WHERE clause and you should get only the new data coming in.